Well, good morning. I'm Ross Demerley, and I am uh, with Munters, and we are sponsoring this uh, breakout session here. And uh, just wanted to say a couple words about uh, about Munters. Munters uh, was, for some of you who's been in the industry a while, uh, formerly Aerotech Ventilation Equipment. Uh, in 2004, we were acquired by Munters Corporation. Um, we are a leader in providing high efficiency ventilation equipment and ventilation systems for uh, multiple industries, anything to do with plants or animals. So whether it's greenhouses, uh, dairy, swine, uh, poultry, whether that's broilers, layers, um, into the turkeys, uh, anything to do with that, we provide uh, ventilation equipment uh, for that. Uh, we've worked many years uh, with Best Labs doing uh, fan testing and all of our fans have been to Best Labs and our Best Labs certified. Uh, and hopefully you enjoy the presentation by Steve. And now on behalf of myself and Munders Corp, I would like to introduce to you our breakout session speaker, Steve Ford. Steve graduated from the University of Illinois Department of Agricultural Engineering with a degree in agricultural mechanization. He has spent over 28 years in the agricultural equipment industry, including experience in design, development, product testing, test standards development for the last 25 years. Steve has been the manager of the University of Illinois Best Labs. The Best Labs is a product testing lab focusing on performance and efficiency measurement of agricultural ventilation and circulation fans. It is my privilege to welcome Steve Ford. Thanks. Thanks, Ross. Uh, it's uh, good to be here today. Um, uh, just uh, to get started here, I'd like to uh, just give you a little background on, on the best labs. Um, we, we are uh, part of the University of Illinois under that uh, university's umbrella. Uh, so what do we do? Uh, you know, as, as Ross said, they've worked with us for years, and many of the other ventilation companies that you're familiar with have worked with our lab. Um, several different... Uh, 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 manners. Some we can do help smaller companies do product development. In other words, we can provide our facilities and and uh, they can use that for some product development if they can't, you know, justify the outlay uh, of of uh, of money to you know some of the equipment it takes. Um, and then secondly, we we have a website and we test equipment that's commercially available. Uh, basically a third party, kind of the consumer reports of uh, the ag ventilation industry. So when we look at uh, uh, dairy barns, you know, we're looking at a lot of different areas where fans can be used. And um, so, so you need to have someone that you know, you know, that really understands the ventilation business to, you know, to get the products that you need. And in turn, those people need good, you know, quantitative data, um, what that fan is actually doing in performance so that, um, you know, not just uh, uh, anecdotal evidence on, on what, what one's doing. Um, so with fans, we're looking at several reasons that we use fans. I mean, this may sound kind of obvious, but um, summer ventilation, of course, we're, you know, you got, you want to keep the temperatures down in the building as much as you can. You want to keep a velocity over those cows. Um, and, um, but winter you need ventilation too, because for humidity control and air quality control, uh, you need some level of ventilation in the winter as well. Um, and then, also, you know, we can, you can couple these fans to get additional cooling through, say, evaporative cooling and so forth. And as well, I, I kind of touched on it, I've, uh, the circulation fans as well. Um, again, to get velocity over the animal. 
velocity over the animal can be uh, done with the ventilation fans depending on the barn design or you know circulating fans which could be used as well which we'll get a little more of a uh, description of what we're talking about really this is one thing to remember when you start looking at fans is there's really two distinct categories of fans you're going to see that we test and that's circulating fans and ventilation fans they're tested in two different manners um, and of course you've got a different uh, you know they're, they're trying to in some cases they're trying to do the same thing get air over the animals ventilation fan may be uh, used as well to keep temperature down or air quality um, of course with a circulating fan you're just you're just basically stirring air um, ventilation fans you're you're looking at moving the air from one location to another of enclosed space um, so yeah here's just a couple uh, you know applications of of uh, a circulation fan and ventilation fans so I'm going to start off with our circulating fans uh, and, and how then we test them. We haven't been testing circulating fans as long as we have ventilation fans. Um, I think in the early 2000s was when we started testing circulation fans. Circulation fans um, are a little challenging to test and uh, uh, a standard was developed at, uh, uh, in 1999 uh, by AMCA where um, if you look at this test stand, basically what we've got is we got a fan mounted, pivots there at the bottom of that vertical upright, and then a load cell in the back. In other words, we're measuring thrust like you would an airplane propeller. Um, you know, so how much how much thrust is it? Well, your cows, you know, they they may not be too concerned about thrust, but part of what we're trying to do is look at uh, apples to apples. Um, so once we've tested that thrust of those fans. Um, the data that you can look at um, and uh, is either compare thrust to one fan to the other or also um, the newer standards have developed a method for calculating airflow uh, in, in CFM or cubic feet per minute which um, you're more used to seeing with the fan and so I think that was kind of the reasoning behind that. Uh, our lab itself, we did add one thing that's not part of that standard, and that's what we call the uh, 5D velocity. What that means is we'll measure a point. So if we're measuring a, a, a four-foot diameter fan, we'll go five diameters, 20 feet downstream, and put an anemometer in line with that, and, and we can measure then a velocity of the, the jet of air at that point to give you some feel for... Um, rather than just the CFM, some feel for what kind of velocities will you get um, at that location. So here's just a look, a uh, snapshot of one of our pages. Um, the other thing we try to do, we try to keep things as standard between one company to the other. Uh, so we'll note on our test reports, you know, how did we test it? Did it have a guard on it or not? Um, you know, some of these circulating fans that are up high, are not tested with guards. Uh, uh, some of them that may be within seven feet or for whatever reason, you know, definitely need to be guarded. Um, you know, we test them in that manner. So, um, so. Uh, AMCA 23012 is the method that we t test those fans for uh, towards. And if you are interested in, in like looking up fans that have been tested in our lab, if the company tests them, and then releases them to our website, you can go then to this, uh, to best.illinois.edu and um, look at, um, you know, results from these tests. So uh, basically this is the kind of page you're going to see. You can, you know, you know whether you're single phase, three phase, um, if you just want to look at one manufacturer looking for certain size fans. Or, or style, whether it be like a panel or a basket or um, so forth. This would, when you go to the page, this is what you'd see. Um, uh, test number on the right, or on the left-hand side there. You can click on that and link. It'll give you a full test report with more information than this. But again, like I said, it'll tell you 
the style of fan uh, that was tested, um, performance. Some of these, some of the performance, uh, it, it's a little confusing because we have both the thrust and the CFM. Some of the um, utilities that are giving rebates um, got their programs going using the thrust and will not only use the thrust, but we'll calculate how efficiently does it move that. And like your miles per gallon on your car, um, basically that's pounds for force per kilowatt. And so the higher number you get, the, the more thrust you're getting per kilowatt you're putting in. Um, some of the utilities that are, have rebate programs for putting in efficient fans are still based off of that. Um, so you're gonna probably see data in both CFM and then uh, uh, thrust efficiency as well. So, um, but then you can see here's a couple different examples of different fans. Um, you probably want to decide beforehand which you know the styles you're putting in, so you're not comparing apples and oranges. That's just a more complete. If you click on that that link on the left hand column, this is what would come up a test similar to this uh, for each fan. It gives you, you just can make sure that what you're getting sold has got the motor that it was tested with. Um, you know, it gives simple description of like the diameter, uh, housing, what materials is it made out of, which, you know, you definitely don't want the wrong materials for, the, for your application, um, particularly as it relates to corrosion in some, some situations. So when you're, when you're looking at circulating fans, uh, what do you want to do? Um, it's important to work with somebody who's had some success in putting together systems with circulating fans. Um, as far as quantity that you need, size, um, style. Uh, and then once you've, you've kind of narrowed it down, um, and, and certainly guarding for your application, um, you know, uh, once you get it narrowed down, then compare apples to apples. Um, if you're looking at, you know, 36 inch fans, I recommend, you know, you look then and compare on our website um, and see, uh, you know, how does it perform as far as thrust and then also efficient efficiency. Um, the other thing that I want to note here is that really has kind of confused a lot of things in the industry is in 99 when they first came out with a standard I think they the AMCA standard was developed before there really been enough uh, work at looking at, um, at at what their airflow rate and after a few years on the market it was pretty apparent that they were giving kind of exaggerated high numbers so there are still some numbers out there that are using these the the that old standard so i guess just kind of as a rule of thumb in your mind you think if it's not this century and that's the standard because i know you guys i mean i run all these numbers all the time but if it's not this century it's 99 at 230 means it's 1999 then and they say that's how they calculate the airflow uh don't compare that to um the newer standards because it gives an exaggerated high numbers and um, you can imagine that some people like to hold on to those numbers because um, they look pretty good but um, but it's not really a direct comparison to the to the newer uh, standards so um, and then as I mentioned before some of the focus on energy some of the other programs for uh, that are promoting efficiency are, are still based on the pound force per kilowatt, not CFM per watt for the circulating fans. So, so we'll just, let's move on to talk a little bit more then about the ventilation fans. Uh, we've been doing this since, and since 90, like I said, we've been doing this a lot, 1990, we've been doing this a lot longer than we have the circulating fans. Uh, and see an example here, obviously, I mean, you're well aware there's, you gotta, you're moving a lot of volume in some of these buildings and uh, um, having the right fan can make all the difference in doing, moving that air efficiently. So this is how we, this is our lab and this is how we test it. So that white box that the fan is, white and red box the fan's mounted on is basically that's, we're simulating basically your barn. Um, 
with that. And what that allows us to do is um, obviously measure airflow very accurately. Um, we measure all electrical usage so that we can calculate a CFM per watt. So um, we're going to calculate our CFM with that chamber and then um, a CFM per watt so we can look at efficiency. But the one other thing that uh, it really allows us to do is we can very easily vary the static pressure that that fan works against. So we can see, um, you know, you can see what a fan does at, at free air or zero static, but nobody's barn's going to operate there. So, um, and depending on your barn, um, there's, it could, you know, I've heard some stories about it being quite high. Uh, so we'll run it over a range of static pressures. And um, so that's pretty much it there. And uh, again, same thing, we can, you can find this data from the fans that have, uh, uh, companies that have released the data on our website there. Uh, and the important thing when we got started on this was, um, what we found out there in advertising literature was there was um, literature that was based on a fan without a shutter on it or guard. Some had shutters, some had guards. Um, some were not sure where they got the numbers, you know. And um, but in any case, so one of the important things is that that all the fans that are on this site are going to be tested with a shutter and guard and whatever their standard attachments and drives are. Um, so these fans are what we call constant speed fans. Well, I should say that the test is a constant speed test. Um, there, you'll find a few variable speed fans in here as well, um, but uh, so here's the, the page you're going you're gonna to look at that you can select, you know, your company uh, size, what you're looking for, um, that bottom one then, whether you're looking for, say, a minimum, if you know that you're trying to meet a certain rebate level, they, they probably have a cutoff point, you can um, you know, narrow it down there. And this, when you did a search, is what you'd see. Similar format, <clears throat> it gives you a size. Um, tells you whether the fan has a discharge cone or not. Um, that's an important issue. Cones are um, one of these attachments that uh, um, can increase both your airflow and efficiency. So it's one of those things that's worth considering. But um, so in other words, if you're looking at a fan and the data that you're looking at is with a cone, you want to make sure that, um, you know, that you put it in with a cone or if not, that you find out what the data is without a cone because it's not going to perform the same without that, this discharge cone. Um, shutter, type of shutter, whether it's aluminum, plastic, some fans now have got uh, what's called a butterfly damper on the exhaust side. <clears throat> And then we give the, in this table, we give the flow rate then at, at two pressures. Um, we're seeing higher and higher pressures probably in, in buildings than in the past. So um, you may even be installing at, and, and wouldn't be unusual to be above even that 0.1 inch static pressure. Um, you can find the data on that when you click on each individual test. and. Uh, will run up to typically three tenths as long as the fan can handle three tenths. Um, there might be some unusual circumstances uh, where probably not designed that way, but you may even operate higher than that. And uh, basically just, uh, you know, if be aware that there are there are programs out there that, uh, um, you know, provide incentives for electric utilities, uh, USDA, NRCS with the uh, on-farm energy initiative, and then some electric utilities just individually will provide, um, uh, you know, provide money if uh, your installation meets certain, certain efficiency ratings. 
when we when companies work with us and they want to reference our lab um, they they certainly can use our complete test re test results and and provide those to a customer but at a minimum if they they say it's tested by a lab. Uh, this is what's required: the, the the actual model of the fan that's tested, and and the test number. So that way, you can take that test number, either call us up just to verify, or or go on the website every once in a while. Um, either something's been archived um, on our website, or and you have a hard time finding it. You can always call us up just to verify that um, what what. Uh, What's provided is is what's accurate, um, and then then an airflow and a, a ventilation efficiency rating at a tenth inch static pressure. So when you're looking at buying a fan, you know we don't have all the answers for you. We have a part of it. So obviously, um, you know we can help you figure out quantity of air and the ventilation efficiency. But you know there's um, also, obviously, playing a part so that your, your, your dealer support, reliability and life of the fan. Um, every fan that's on our site may not be the right site is, or the right fan for your application. Um, we've got fans that range from galvanized steel, uh, plastics, fiberglasses, stainless steel. So you need to you know, you need to work with people that have experience or from your own experience, you know, take that into account as well for, for sure. And obviously cost. This is just a quick uh, calculation I ran of, of a fan that, uh, uh, 51 inch fans that are on our site. And depending on what their, your application is, um, I suspect that that uh, that fan one is a lot higher static pressure capability. So it may be, even though its uh, operating cost per year is a little higher electrically wise, that that may be, if you're operating something at a very high static, that may be the fan you choose. On the other hand, if you're looking at um, operating at a lower static pressure, uh, my guess is that and you'd need to pull the full test up just to verify, you know, that that, that fan would work. But uh, if you're working at a lower static, then you probably should consider maybe fan fan uh, two with its, uh, you know, you, you multiply that by the number of fans on your farm, and, and that can add up at uh, $72 a year difference. And I've touched on this a couple times. You really need to be aware and not just assume, okay, this fan does, you know, this flow and that fan, fan does, the, you know. Uh, we're static pressure. It may be that, um, you know, you need to, to know what you're, you're operating at static pressure. I mean, all these things are going to affect your static pressure that are listed here. Um, evaporative cooling pads. Um, and just in themselves sized correctly will will and if uh, the inlet area in front of those is is not up to what it should be it could really star starve your fan um, and then I think the, uh, one thing that we hear a lot that people just don't realize is you get a longer and longer barn or um, for instance with this picture where you got baffles you keep um, go to the next one um, you got the baffles down so you can get the velocity down by the, um, over the, the cow's back. Um, I guess it just, it, it isn't inherently obvious that if you just keep putting more baffles in and make a longer barn, that just, it's, you just keep adding up static pressure. Um, and you can get to a point where you're really starving your fan and, and not moving the air that you need. So that's where working with, um, you know, that's not something we test, but that's where working with, uh, uh, you know, someone who really knows knows their barn design and what kind of uh, static pressures you're going to be up against if you start, um, start doing that. This um, is just kind of a way to, to look at what's going on there. So the individual... Um, 
curve that's going from the upper left down to the uh, lower right, that's your fan curve. So you could see um, we got our flow rate there on the bottom. It maxes out at 10,000 at zero static pressure. And then um, this fan uh, actually you know, went down to zero airflow at a little under three tenths. Um, most fans that you're going to see on the market are actually going to be a little stronger than that one. Um, this is just an example to, to show what's going on. But the other two curves is, can help you think about what's going on when you, uh, um, with your air inlets, um, you look at that kind of pink colored curve and you see we're probably up maybe a little over 7,500 CFM. Well, this is what we call a system curve. So um, let's say we add one more baffle into our barn and it's gonna change our system curve to that gray one um, so that we're no longer, a couple things that are going on there. So our static pressure's gone up to about 0.12. If you go across, you go straight across over the static pressure. And it's also dropped our airflow um, down probably 7,000 or under. Now, you know, that example there, that might not be enough to cause any problems, but that's just an illustration that if you, um, if you don't watch what you're doing, you could get in a situation where you've got a curve that's much more extreme than that gray one that's way over on the left-hand side of the, the curve. And you may be operating at two tenths when you design the, the amount of error that you wanted. You wanted 7,500 at operating at a tenth. You actually end up operating your barn at two tenths. And that means you're under you're probably 4,000, 3,500, 4,000. You know, you then look at what kind of velocities are, are going over your cows. It's not going to be what you want. So, um, I was. Uh, so again, just be aware of um, your design. Now, this is just this is just kind of look at the effect um, of, or basically let to to look at what products are out there over the years. Um, this is data from our lab. I chose the 48 because uh, back when we started in in the early 90s, uh, there weren't many of fans larger than 48. 48 was kind of the big fan out there. So um, I could find that, and, and, and it's still a fan that's, that's built today. So we're looking at our efficiency. You could see there was a big jump between 99 and, and 2003 and the fans that came through our lab. And so this is just data pulled off our our website or in the past we actually had a printed uh, fan book of all the data. And you can see we've basically held steady the last since 2003 on efficiency, but a big jump in the beginning after we started testing. But if you look at this graph, um, even in 2015, even though we still had that jump in efficiency, we're holding efficiency. Now we've even, even the the companies are designing better fans, and they're moving more air at the same efficiency, which is, it's kind of like what you'd expect to see. But it's nice to, you know, look at the hard numbers and see that yeah, when there's test data out there, it really pushes pushes the products that can perform better. Um, in the market, and uh, it's a real advantage in the, to the end user. So, so um, I guess with that, if um, you know, I know we could probably have a wide range of of people here. On uh, if you have questions on anything that we've gone over, or um, I'm happy to answer any. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, that, there certainly are some people doing some of that work. I'm not. That's not. I'm not too involved in that. So um, uh, I run across a few papers periodically. Um, as far as design, I probably wouldn't have much advice whether cross ventilation or tunnel ventilation on one way. I haven't seen enough personally of the data to, you know, to make choices in that, in that way. 
Yeah. Yeah. Broke them off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't test that, but I have heard I have heard that. So that's one of those things where intended application probably, you know, from experience in in your climates, you know, your dealer, that's the kind of thing that the dealers can help you out with hopefully a lot. I wouldn't think so, no. I have heard that I mean I have heard that happening. Um, other things I've heard, this is more in hog buildings in the past, is um, small, smaller, typically smaller fans that similar in a very cold environment um, where it would, the tip of the, the fan blade would freeze to the housing and then that wouldn't kick on. Um, when on variable speed wasn't enough, wasn't strong enough torque to, to kick it. So there there's more than, we do understand there's more than just what goes on in the lab of what's a good product. And that's kind of our caveat that you say, you know, you need to pick the right one for your, um, for your application too. So, you had a question? Um, yeah, do you have any evaluation of the maintenance needed for the fans and the costs that might be related to that? We don't. I mean, we've done, um, yeah, we don't have a lot on that. We've done a few tests where we've looked at, um, say, fans that had dirty shutters. On, on this case, it was off of one of our hog farms on, on the campus farm. Um, and we were kind of disappointed when we went out because our manager had done a pretty good job. But we, we, we took one out of the building, brought it in. It looked like it was fairly clean. Um, ran a test, cleaned it up. Yeah, um, lubricated the shutters, and we even even in this case where you know I've been on farms where I've seen much worse fans, and we still had a 10% increase in performance and, and efficiency. Um, years back, I saw a, a research paper that they were seeing numbers even 40%. But this is a more of a maintenance issue um, affecting flow up to 40. You can imagine that one probably looked pretty bad with dirt and crud on it to get you know, to get to that point. But that's um, certainly important and anecdotally what we hear a lot too is uh, belt drive fans since, if a fan's turning, that doesn't necessarily mean its belt's not quite worn. Um, and most farmers aren't gonna take a tachometer out and measure and say, oh, you know, I'm down 30 RPM. Um, so that certainly is one thing we know that, um, it's it's not unusual for a belt say a belt drive fan if it's not been maintained in a while to be uh, probably off on its its flow rate. Yeah. Um, many times when you're out there, you see on your test sheet the clearance from the tip to the housing. Mm-hmm. But when you go into barns, it's actually if it says 200 pounds, it's probably closer to a half inch. How much does that vary? How does that measure, or how does that compare to what's? Oh, how does it affect what it's out in the field? Um, well, it's not. It's not as. I mean, it, it does have an effect, and if you ever if you get into like grain drying fans, it has a real big effect because. Um, typically when you get into higher pressures, the, the higher pressure you get in, the larger f effect it'll have. Um, I, I would say it's, without being able to put a number, it's not a huge concern if it's, you know, just a little bit larger on that type of, on a, on a, on a ventilation fan. But, I mean, I guess the, the concern is that you know, if, if, if you really are seeing a pretty considerable difference that makes you question, is this what was actually tested in the lab? And I just wondered, because I know a lot of times when we test fans, the closer it is to the housing, the better the performance. Yeah. Oh, certainly would, would be better. Usually at the low statics, not much difference. As you get up higher static, typically, you know, make a little more difference.
Okay. Yeah. I don't hear now that is one thing our just our chamber itself we um, at least to meet all the standards we can't quite fit a 72 on our chamber uh, I do hear a little bit about them and we have done in the past some kind of preliminary work on on them um, some of the early models we saw were not very good um, but that isn't to say what's out there now I know that some there's definitely been some testing and um, but that's a good question. That's a question I have too, as, as how do they hold up at high static pressures? On a lot of the barns that I've seen them in, they're using pusher fans also to minimize the static pressure so the performance can stay up. And there are times, three years ago, you looked at a test that was 60,000. I mean, if you look at one now, it's down at 38. Yeah. Um, the difference in the fan is the horsepower and the blades are Yeah. Well, yeah, I can't go too much into that because our lab wasn't the one that did those tests, but um, I think there was a little shakeout, and I think the newer numbers are more realistic. That's about all I'll say. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Well, appreciate everybody for coming, and uh, if you... Um, you know, in the future, if you if you have questions, want to contact me. Actually, there's a phone number on that website, the best.illinois.edu, and uh, you know, I'd be happy to entertain questions uh, that way as well. And there's there's also a link for uh, an email as well. So. There's packets of uh, some of the literature from uh, Munters over on the side there as you exit. If you have specific questions for Steve, feel free.